Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and we're well on our way into spring 2020, which means that it's time for Adobe to release new updates for their video editing apps. Today, I want to give you a brief overview of three of the biggest new features for Premiere Pro and After Effects, and tell you why I think these are some of the biggest updates that Adobe has ever made for these programs. Up first, we need to talk about one of the most jaw-dropping updates that Adobe has made to Premiere Pro. And this is something that's gonna make you wanna update pretty much immediately. With this update, Premiere Pro now supports hardware encoding using NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards for both Mac and Windows. Now you may be a bit confused by this. I know that I was. When I first heard the news, I was like, doesn't Adobe already support hardware encoding? What about NVIDIA CUDA? What about OpenCL? Well, this is new and different. The latest version of Premiere Pro can now use your graphics card to encode your H.264 and H.265 exports. What the heck does this mean, Matt? It means that your video exports can be up to four times faster. Videos that take 20 minutes to export could be done in five. This is a crazy increase in rendering speeds, and from the tests I've seen, there is no loss in visual quality. So how do you get it? Well, first you need to update to the latest version of Premiere. You then need to check and see what graphics card is installed inside your computer. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, anything after the 1000 series will work. As long as you at least have a GTX 1050, your exports are going to be faster. On the other hand, if you have an AMD graphics card, so far I've only been able to confirm this works with their Radeon Pro cards. I will link down in the description to a page where you can check and see if your graphics card is supported by this update. Keep in mind that the faster that your graphics card is, the faster your exports should should be. Moving on to the next big Adobe update, this is for both Premiere Pro and After Effects. And both of these programs now support ProRes RAW natively on Mac and PC. This is a relatively newer codec, but those of you shooting with a Nikon Z6 or a Panasonic S1H that support recording ProRes RAW externally will be happy to know that you don't need to have some weird workaround to make it work. Premiere and After Effects now support ProRes RAW natively. If you're on a Mac, all you have to do to enable ProRes RAW support is download the latest versions of Premiere Pro and After Effects. But if you're on PC, you'll also need to download the ProRes RAW decoder for Windows directly from Apple. I will link to that down in the description. Last for feature updates, we need to talk about an update for Premiere Pro and After Effects that's a bit more nebulous. The third feature isn't one specific thing. It's a fundamental shift in how Adobe approaches their video and audio applications. When Adobe announced the spring updates for their Creative Cloud apps, they published a new blog post titled, Performance and stability are highest priority. And in this blog post, they detailed how over the past year, they've been making changes to the way they develop the software to focus on those two things. Those of you that have had to deal with Premiere crashing will be so glad to hear this. Spend any time on Adobe's forum or Bug Reports feedback page, and you'll know that there are thousands of video editors that use Premiere that are not happy with the program's performance. For years now, it feels like video editors have been telling Adobe, slow down with all the features Feature updates. Focus on making the program stable. Focus on fixing the bugs. And with this blog post, it sounds like Adobe is finally listening. Half the blog post is about how they are making changes to their development process to make the software more stable, including how they're using Premiere's system compatibility report and their new public beta to make the software run smoothly. The other half of the blog post focuses on performance. According to Adobe, this latest version of Premiere is capable of playing back seven simultaneous streams of ProRes video, where the last version could only play back four simultaneous streams. It's looking like this update is going to enable you to edit and export quicker without even needing to upgrade your hardware. I love that. Between the new public beta for Premiere Pro, faster playback when editing, and export speeds that are up to four times faster, it's a breath of fresh air to see Adobe making these changes. That's why I feel like this third feature for Premiere Pro and After Effects isn't one specific thing. It's a fundamental shift in how Adobe approaches developing their software. It almost feels like a new company. So in conclusion, this Adobe Spring Update doesn't bring a long list of new features that completely revolutionize video editing. But 
I don't think that was needed. Instead, Adobe showed that they've been listening to video editors and are starting to make changes to their software that are focused on the fundamentals, stability and performance. Am I still skeptical? Of course. I've seen Adobe downplay issues with the speed and stability of their software for years. And if they had just released this blog post saying performance and stability are top priority, but they hadn't released any updates to actually show that, I probably would have just rolled my eyes. But with that blog post, we get four times faster exporting and smoother playback when editing. That blog post wasn't just an empty claim. They're actually listening to us editors. And that, in my opinion, is why these are some of the most important updates that Adobe has ever released. Looking at the other options, there's too much competition from Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve for Adobe to keep releasing buggy software. I'm hoping that this is Adobe turning over a new leaf. I'm hoping that from here on out, we're gonna get bug-free software that is stable and fast from them. But only time will tell. You can expect more videos about Premiere Pro and After Effects from me in the future. And it would be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see those videos. Also, if you want to join in the discussion about this new Adobe update, I would love if you would consider joining my Facebook group. It's linked down in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.